many residents just feel that to get away for a day could significantly reduce their stress and mitigate the isolation from the rest of San Francisco. Recommendation four, support relevant and engaging outreach to inform individual residents about available mental health services while working at a community level to destigmatize and demystify mental health care. The provision of on-site clinical mental health services within public housing sites is viewed, is viewed as critical by researchers. Both on-site and off-site services need to increase community presence and education. Outreach is necessary Section will address programming staff. Recommendation number five. Mental health services should address staffing issues that impact resident access and staff effectiveness. As much as possible, mental health programs should hire staff members that have direct understanding of community experiences, are re relatable to Hope SF residents they serve, and are sensitive to cultural norms. Also, they should ensure consistent staffing and the use of temporary clinicians and interns should be minimized. All staff should receive support for their own stress and traumatic experiences and participate in training on trauma-informed approaches. Using all these approaches will work to minimize staff turnover and allow for residents to connect and build trust with staff. One mother said that residents just need someone to talk to them, someone they can just open up to, not feel like they're being judged, not like a therapist or, I don't know what you consider that, but somebody that they can honestly just talk to, let it all out, and be real with. Recommendation number seven, develop an on-site inclusive community center for the whole family that provides embedded mental health services and a variety of wellness resources to promote positive relationships with the well-being of, the well -being of residents. Residents want an all-inclusive one-stop shop that has integrated services to include the whole family. Programs will include a variety of classes, support groups, therapy, and social activities. Staff, resident leaders, and residents should all be involved in organizing groups and activities with the purpose of reducing stress for residents. One key stakeholder noted, I think that if services can be co-located with other services, whether it's job training, child care, any time a service is located in the path of daily life, it becomes easier to access those services. There is a limitation in the literature and the assessment on how to embed services. There needs to be further examination and discussion on how to put this into practice. So our last recommendation is about individualized services. Provide case management to all Hope SF families in need to assess their ongoing needs, improve service planning and coordination, and promote sustained mental health and well-being. 
A number of key stakeholders identify the individualized case management as a way to bridge the gap between residents and services. Ideally, there should be one case manager for each family to provide a deeper needs assessment of that individual household. One key stakeholder explained, resources aren't always matched with where the needs are. It is important to evaluate the needs and particular specialties of the provider so there is a match. Being able to improve the links between residents and services is a way to improve ongoing care. Additionally, case managers can also bring services to individual family members, and in that way, they can help to support the entire family as a whole. So that, include, that concludes our presentation. Um, thank you all for joining us today. A special thanks goes to all the residents, program staff, and key stakeholders who were interviewed. Uh, your insights were invaluable to this assessment, and we thank all of you for your contributions to this report. Um, a special thanks also goes to the, these groups and organizations um, for their commitment and their time to this report. Um, the assessment advisory group, the Hope SF site leadership, Bridge Housing, Mercy Housing, the Baby YMCA, and Urban Strategies, as well as Hope SF, the Campaign for Hope, the San Francisco Department of Public Health, the Department of Health Education, and the Health Equity Institute at San Francisco State University. Um, working on this assessment has been incredibly impactful for all of us students. Um, taking what we learn in the classroom into real life practice has been both challenging and very rewarding. Um, so a special thanks goes to our instructors, Jessica Woolen and Sarah Wong King. Without you, you don't think this report would have come out as well as it did. Um, and thanks you to all of you for being here and for all of your support and commitment to us and to this project and to the children and families of Hope SF.